So I'm told that quite often I'll say that, oh, this is my favourite maths task and that is my favourite maths task. So I thought, Gareth, don't say that again. Today really is my favourite maths task of, of them all. This one is a cracker. We're going to start today investigating something which is just, I think, is fabulous. And we're going to extend it even further on Monday. So really, really, really can't wait for this one. Uh, enjoy it. See if you can spot the pattern. Uh, I think you're going to love it. Well, we start today with Joel's challenge. So Joel, thank you so much for sending this through. It was brilliantly designed. Um, 15 multiplied by eight equals 120. And then we have a sequence of questions that are linked to one another. So when you're answering them, have a think about how does the question above help you to answer the question that you're on? Uh, pause the video and have a go. Okay, when, when you're ready, let's have a look. Um, and I really like this one because um, it's 50 multiplied by 8. 50 multiplied by 16, well, you can see the 8 has been doubled. Uh, so we've got double the number of 15s. So in total, uh, yep, yeah, there we go, 240. Um, 15 times 16 becomes 17 times 16. So we're still multiplying by 16, but this time, well, we'll have two more lots of 16. And our answer increases by 32, which of course is two lots of 16 more. And then we go from 17 times 16, 272, to 34 times 16. So again, the 17 is doubled to make 34. The answer is doubled, um, 544. Joel, love that sequence, love the thinking. Thank you for being able to start us off with that. So today, have I mentioned that I'm looking forward to this one? The title is called the largest product. So the product is when two numbers are multiplied together and, and it's the answer when two numbers are multiplied together. And so we're looking, how do we make a product as large as possible? So have a look at this. Now for this question, I deliberately don't wanna give you very long. So don't pause the video, just have a look. And I want you to tell the screen what's the same and what's different. What's the same, what's different about these calculations? Don't work out the answer. Okay, so hopefully you've talked about what's the same and you've noticed what's the same and what's different. I wonder what you've, what you've noticed about, about perhaps the digits that are the same um, and the kinds of calculations that we have. Um, now, to these calculations, and I hope you've not worked out those answers, will all the answers be the same, do you think? Or will some of the answers be the same? Or actually, will they all be different answers? What do you think? Have a look at them and, and tell the screen. What do you think there? Again, no need to pause here, but just have a think, have a look, and do you think, just what do you, what do you think? All the answers are gonna be the same, some are the same, or all different, why? How, how can you tell? Okay, well, let's have a little look. Um, so we've got 65 times four, 54 times six, 64 times five. Now, again, just have a look there. You, you might wanna pause now if, if, if you want to, um, but have a look, and what do you notice that's the same, and what's different? Well, let's, let's have a little look there. I noticed that two of the um, two of the answers are very similar. So 364 multiplied by five is 320. 54 multiplied by six, 324, slightly more. Whereas 65 times four is a lot less. I wonder why that is. Uh, let's have a look, what's the same? Well, well, these two end in the digit zero. Five multiplied by four and four multiplied by five gives the a ones value of zero. Um, and then what else do we have that's, that's the same? Well, 60 multiplied by five, 300. 50 multiplied by six, 300. That, there's another similarity. Whereas 60 multiplied by four is less. So I guess on this one, um, my smallest digit is the four, and that multiplies by the 60 and the five, whereas I've got larger digits here. And that's an interesting thing. Now, some of this thinking we'll address further on, on the main task today, um, which is here. Okay, so this is a, a bit of a longer investigation for us to, to go through together. And what I want you to do is this. You're going to make a two digit by two digit multiplication. Now, if you need a calculator to actually help doing the calculation today, that's okay. Equally, you might manage to do the calculation element without a calculator. It's entirely up to you. Um, but what you're going to need to do is position the digits 0, 4, 5 and 8 to make the product as large as possible. So have a think. Which digits will you put in which places? How do you know? Um, now, we're going to pick through this in a moment, but see, make a start, maybe think which digits will go where, or, or maybe you'll actually be able to find what you think is the largest product. 
Um, but pause the video and and start the uh, start the task off. Okay, I hope you've had a good go now. Um, now let's kind of unpick some of the thinking here. So, um, I think that one thing that we uh, will we'll need to figure is I'll need the largest digits, the eight and the five, in the tens positions, and the smallest digits, the zero and the four, in the in the ones um, positions. So it it will be eighty something multiplied by fifty something. To, to make the product as large as possible. Um, but that leads to the question, I guess, of this. So which way around should I position the zero and the four? Or doesn't it matter? 80 multiplied by 54, um, 84 multiplied by 50. Which, which will give the larger product? Or will the product be the same, I wonder? What, why is that? I wonder how well you can explain that um, and, and you're thinking there. Um, pause the video, have a think and explain. What, what, what do you think? I wonder what, what your explanation is or what, what your thinking is there. Now, I'm going to show you a picture that helps me to understand this. Um, so here, on these two images, on the left, I'm going to show you 80 multiplied by 54 with an area model. And on the right, I'm going to show you 84 multiplied by 50 with an area model. Um, now, so far, I've shown an area model for 80 multiplied by 50 on both pictures. Okay. Now, what I want you to do is this. Pause the video and have a think. How will each area model be changed? What's going to happen to the area model here to make it 80 multiplied by 54? What will happen here to make this area model 84 multiplied by 50? And so which will have the larger product? Pause the video and have a think. So let's have a look at how those images change. 80 multiplied by 54? Well, it will be another four there. So I'll have another four lots of 80. Um, and the image on the, on the right, well, I'll have 80 will become 84. So I'll have another four lots of 50. So which one's more? Well, when we have four more lots of 80, that's more than having four more lots of 50. So 80 multiplied by 54 will be more than 84 multiplied by 50. Now, just notice this pair of numbers is are closer together and this pair of numbers are slightly further apart. Now, I did this activity once in a classroom and I loved this explanation. So someone had worked out the answers with a short method and also with a grid method. And I always remember them saying to me, one thing that I notice is the grid method is great for showing this, he said, that 50 multiplied by 80 is the same in both of them. But here, I've got uh, 80 multiplied by 4 is 320, and that's more than 50 multiplied by 4. So it's the amount that we multiply the, uh, the one's value by that makes the difference to the size of the number. Brilliant thinking, I thought. So here are today's tasks. To find this, click on the blue link underneath this video, wherever you're viewing the video. It'll bring open task A, task B, and the extend task. So for task A, Position the digits three, four, and five to make the product as large as possible. And then do it again to make the product as small as possible. Uh, see how you can apply what we've learned to do that, what, what the kind of rules are to make the product as large or as small. Uh, task B is similar, except this time we, we've got four digits and it's a two digit number multiplied by a two digit number. So have a think, do you want those numbers to be relatively close together or further apart? Where do you put the larger digits, the smaller digits? Have a think about that one. Now, for these calculations, if you need to use a calculator to do, to do the actual calculating, if that's necessary, then do that. But really think about and how you can explain which will give the larger product, which will give the smaller product and why. Now, if you would like an eye-wateringly difficult extension, then have a go at the extend task. This time, we're using letters A, B, C and D. Now, those letters represent a single digit and A is smaller, and then B gets a bit larger, C is larger than A and B, uh, and D is the largest of those four digits. And, uh, and it's about thinking, well, where would you position them to make the answer as large as possible? I I'd love to know how you get on if anyone tries the extend task, uh, so good luck with that one. Um, the, the kind of theme, the principle from today, we're gonna to extend uh, at the start of next week as well, and I'll really look forward to seeing you back then.
I just wanted to, for you to be able to see me so I can finish by saying my personal thanks for everything that you've done, for all the people that you've involved. I know I've seen people having Zoom calls with their friends when the videos have been going on so they can talk, which is amazing, involving grandparents, sending your work through and everything. I'm going to go off and dream up some more activities for next week and I'm really looking forward to seeing you again then.